you know, we want to kind of have this conversation as we discussed earlier about what it's like here in Sacramento and, and race relations specifically. Um, I'll start off with just asking, uh, have any of you guys had an encounter with the police here, whether it was being pulled over for a traffic stop or, you know, being approached at a protest or something, just any kind of everyday interaction you might have had? I've had multiple interactions with, uh, with the police in Sacramento. It's always been, terms of the relationship between us and them, you know, so I would imagine for the most part it's just a matter of time before it's your turn. Mm -hmm. I don't think I know any black male my age or older, younger, really, starting at the age of 14, who has not had an encounter with the police, um, especially teens. Fortunately enough, I've had men in my life who's been able to educate me on how to talk to an officer, or how to deal with them, especially when I notice that their demeanor is changing. So I've been able to, for the most part, I don't even wanna say get out of those situations because there's not really a get out of this situation when you're dealing with this type of thing on a regular basis. But I've been able to avoid, um, I guess, being any, anything escalating. So, but they have pulled me over and thrown everything out of my car before, um, even after checking my ID and seeing my business cards in the front, seeing exactly, asking me what I do. I work with children, I work with autistic kids. So even after still throwing my stuff out the car, plenty of situations, but it's, it's, it's an everyday thing. And I don't like to think that it's just something that I go through or that it's a difference for us because unfortunately, all of us go through it. Mm -hmm. All of us go through it, whether you've been to school or not. Mm -hmm. Whether you have a job or not, you go through it. The way I look, whether it don't matter how dark my skin is, how light my skin is, at the end of the day, they see me as they see them. You know, mm -hmm. we're all one. Whether it's white police or whatever the case is, you know, to them, I'm not them. Especially at our age, and it doesn't matter where, it doesn't really matter where you're at or really what skin color you are, if it's black or brown, whatever shade it is, with the way that we look, dreads, tattoos on our arms, just the way that we carry ourselves as men, it may be seen as a threat to some. So if you're seen as a threat to anybody of power, you're going to be questioned or put in a situation that you don't want to be in with them. How does the way you were born dictate what you wear, how you speak to people, or just what decisions you make every day just because you want to be careful in your own skin? At some point, it's a question of, am I still able to be me? Because if I have to question whether or not I could wear garments that I've bought, then that means that there's a problem, a, a greater problem hmm. somewhere besides my closet. Talk about it. Because just because I decide to put on a hoodie or because I have dreads or if I don't put on my hoodie because I decide to wear a tank top and show off my tattoos, that doesn't decide the type of person I am, the type of job that I have, the yeah. things that I do for my people, the things that I do for my family. And unfortunately, all of that stuff is overlooked. What do you hope to see change? I know we've talked a lot about accountability and we've seen that word, but what does that really mean and to what level do we need to see that for the community to heal and accept law enforcement and feel protected? Um, what does it look like to, I mean, idealistically to me, um, I think it was murder, cold-blooded murder. So them being reprimanded and fired, indictment charges, um, changes within their own policy, the Bill of Rights, Black Lives Matter, hands up, don't shoot, stop killing us. You know, at this point, it's like we're not asking you to stop killing us, but you think we're asking. You're not begging nobody for your liberation. You take that, you know what I mean? So I think um, us finding ways, again, within our own community to govern ourselves um, and minimalize uh, interaction with them all together to a point where we won't need them. Uh, you know, we, we don't need them. They're doing more harm than good within our community. So I think that's, that's the future I'm looking forward to.
Would you be, would you feel satisfied at least with the Stefan Clark case? Obviously this conversation goes beyond that, but would you feel satisfied if the officers were fired, charged, or would it take more for you to feel satisfied with the outcome of this? I mean, before him it was plenty, after him, and it, it would probably be more unfortunately. So the work is never done and it takes us continuously getting together and uniting and talking to each other and having conversations about unity and what we can do to help each other progress before we, 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 we look at anybody else for help. Are you hopeful? I, you know what I'm hopeful in? I'm, 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 I'm honest. I'm not hopeful in anything the system. Nothing that has to do with the system. I'm hopeful in my people. But as far as the system goes in America, mm -hmm. It's been this way too long. Yeah. Like, you know, can a, can a, can a uh, zebra change its stripes? Can a leopard change its spots? America needs to stay the way it's always been. In order for America to function the way America has been functioning for, for what America wants to be, it needs to stick to its model. Mm -hmm. And times change, things change, so they, I think things have just shifted in order to kind of appear a different way, mm -hmm. but it needs to work the way we built it in order for it to work. So that's why I'm not hopeful in the system. I'm hopeful in the people though. Be careful because everything wears a mask and everyone wears a mask. I say Sacramento wears a mask well. Yeah. Sacramento wears a, a mask. mask well. It does. It does. And that's funny you say that because when we were doing this conversation, we, our executive producer said, we want to lift the blindfold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's been living with a blindfold and I think with this situation for, for whatever reason, mm -hmm lifted the blindfold off of a lot of people's eyes and sparked conversations and uncomfortable conversations in the home that spread to the street, that went on the interstate into mm -hmm. the Kings game. Yeah. Uh, what was your take on even that having, having that impact not once but twice to shut down two NBA games? I think that was beautiful. Again, because it brings attention um, mm -hmm. to the situation. Like, you know, your abuser's not going to abuse you so bad when all eyes is, is watching. Mm -hmm. You know, wait till nobody's watching. And right now, all eyes is a sack with that. And as far as shutting down the game, I'm forever advocate of hitting them in their pockets. You know what I mean? You, you talk to people in their pockets, they're going to hear you. Yeah. You can scream, yell, kick, do whatever you want to do. When you start talking about their pockets, well, they're listening now. And, yeah. you know, so I think that was whoever thought, whoever did that, Good. That was yeah. genius. Great. Mm -hmm. that was big. Put out there what it is like to be in your skin, in your shoes, and seeing things like Stephon Clark happen in your backyard? Through it all, it's great to be an African man, um, alive and breathing. We go through things and series of experiences that seem to you know, they say make you bitter or better. But I believe it's all a lesson. And every lesson that I go through as an African man is only to pass on to somebody. As long as I survive it and I get through it, I believe like that's not, it didn't even happen. It happened to me for a reason for somebody else. You know what I mean? Um, so with that being said, I think it's a beautiful thing to be alive. Um, we go through our struggles, you know, but I, I believe we're going to make it. I feel like I am more than just me and my skin. I am not only me, I am my nephews, I am my father, mm -hmm. I am his father, mm -hmm. I am his father, Ashe. and I am his father. Ashe. So that means I am power. We are kings, we are strong. So we're gonna walk like that and we will continue to and I will continue to teach that to my son and I hope he teaches that to his son sure. and I hope he teaches that to his son. Cause we are kings and we will be here. And it's beautiful to be in this skin. It is, it's a beautiful thing, man. I mean, I don't live in no fear either. You know, you just gotta ra keep raising awareness, keep teaching. I probably have fear of somebody else I know, it was a relative, friend, or whatnot. I live in fear as for them. I fear for them, just cause you know. But as far as myself, you know, I'm I'm, I'm just prepared, just prepare myself as much as I can. The system got to topple. The system has to topple. So I mean, it's it's again everything is. I'm tired of asking. I'm tired of pointing the finger. It ain't got nothing to do with them no more. It's on us. How are we gonna rise up? And I just want a fair mm -hmm. shot for us as Africans in America to just grow healthy, happy, and whole, you know, and then we can go out with the world, interact, and show love with everybody. Mm -hmm. But we got to perfect the master showing love with ourselves. We need space and time to heal. Mm -hmm. And we come out smiling, hugging, holding hands with everybody, but we just need us right now. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully 
being able to share your experiences and being so open with them will help some other people kind of understand that they're not alone in this healing process and can help move this conversation forward and not let it die on the vine. And right. it's only a matter of time until we are probably having this conversation again, but hopefully something mm -hmm. can change between then and now. Hopefully. Hopefully.